Welcome back, everyone, on this documentary by the Talt Foundation. We're about to take a deep dive into a fascinating part of history, the Amazite presence in ancient Egypt. Today, we're diving deep into ancient Egypt, but we're not doing the usual pyramids and pharaohs thing you what? usually hear about. We're uncovering a different story this time. This is the story of Inaros a Libyan prince who decided to take on the Persian Empire. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. In Aro's Rebellion, you know, this is a pretty big deal. This wasn't just a footnote in history or something. It was actually uh, a pivotal moment. Yeah. That tells us a lot about, you know, the struggles for power and also, like, all the different cultures mm -hmm. that were bumping up against each other back then. And what's interesting is the Amazai, a North African people with a history going back thousands of years, have deep roots in Egypt that go way beyond just a single rebellion. Right, it's like they're a, a hidden thread woven into the fabric of Egyptian society. Exactly, think of them as an integral part of the tapestry of Egyptian society. We've got some incredible sources, including accounts from ancient Greek writers and even a novel that really brings Inaros' story to life. Oh, absolutely. And a great place to start is Herodotus, often called the father of history. He gives us incredible detail about the Amazai, sometimes called Libyans in those old texts and their role in Egyptian society. And he actually visited Egypt like not too long after all this stuff went down. Or... Yeah. So we're getting some firsthand stuff, like someone who was actually there. That's right, someone who walked that ground. Yeah. All right, so you might be thinking, like, who is this Inaros guy? Well, he's a Libyan prince. Yeah. Son of a chieftain named Samtik. Okay. And he, you know, kind of jumps into the spotlight in Egyptian history. See, that's what I find kind of strange, right? Yeah. A Libyan prince is suddenly like, leading a rebellion in Egypt? What's up with that? Well, to get that, we need to rewind a little bit. Okay. And look at the whole political scene back then. So by the time Anaros comes along, Egypt had been conquered by the Persians. Right. Under Cambyses II. But, you know, the Egyptians and the Persians who were ruling over them, let's just say it wasn't exactly a happy friendship. Ah, uh, so like a powder keg waiting to blow up. You could say that. Hmm. And Anaros, he was clever. Yeah. He used this tension. And he actually united Egyptians and Libyans together against this common enemy they both had, the Persians. Okay, yeah. And we got to remember, Libyans, they had, like, a long history in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They'd been settling in the Nile Delta region since, like, the time of Pharaoh Mos I. Okay, so they weren't just, like, random outsiders showing up. Not at all. So Inaris could actually tap into this shared history they had and the fact that they both weren't too happy with the Persians. You got it. Yeah. And here's where it gets really cool. He didn't fight this battle alone. Oh. He managed to get the Athenians on his side. Wait a minute. Yeah. Athens like Greece. You got it. What are they doing in an Egyptian rebellion? So this was during the Greco-Persian Wars. Mm -hmm. Like a whole bunch of fighting going on between all the Greek city-states and the massive Persian Empire. Right. Athens, they were like, hmm, you know what? Yeah. If we help Inaros out... That's like punching the Persians from another direction. Right. Take some of the heat off of us. Ah, uh, strategic. Super strategic. Okay. So can you imagine all the political maneuvering going on? Yeah, so Inaros is like this major player in this much bigger fight between the Greeks and the Persians. So we have a Libyan prince who's backed by the Athenians, and they're all trying to kick the Persians out of Egypt. The Persians, of course, want to hang on to it. Exactly. <laughs> That's high-stakes stuff. Oh, yeah, and all this leads up to... The Battle of Papremis. Okay. Big clash of civilization. This is the one where Herodotus talks about seeing all those skulls, right? Yeah, yeah. He describes it pretty vividly. He sees all these Persian skulls just lying around the battle site. Yeah, right. And he even points out these fascinating cultural exchanges. Like, for example, Herodotus mentions both Egyptians and Amazai practiced head shaving. Wow. That's, uh, that's really interesting. It seems like a small detail, but it makes you think, right? about their interactions. Absolutely. It makes you wonder if it points to some shared beliefs or even rituals. It challenges us to go beyond just the simple facts and consider those deeper cultural connections that might have existed. It reminds us that these ancient cultures, they weren't isolated, mm -hmm. but constantly influencing each other yeah. and learning from each other. Exactly. Okay, so we've established the Amazon weren't just some fringe group in Egypt. They were deeply embedded in society. Which brings us to Inaros, a Libyan prince who led a revolt against the Persians around 460 BC. Now, this wasn't just a small uprising, was it? No, not at all. And Inaros challenged the mighty Persian Empire, 
which at that time was one of the largest and most powerful empires the world had ever seen. Wow. And to make things even more interesting, he managed to get the Athenians to help him fight. Wait, so Athenians, all the way from Greece, sailed into Egypt to fight alongside a Libyan prince against the Persians. That's right. That's an alliance I never would have guessed. It really highlights how connected the ancient world was. Alliances weren't limited by geography. They were driven by, well, shared goals and strategic opportunities. Right. So it wasn't just about where you were on a map. It was about who you wanted to work with to achieve a, a specific goal. Exactly. It also says a lot about Inaros, his leadership skills, his charisma. He must have been very persuasive to convince the Athenians to commit their resources to his cause. Yeah, to get them to travel all that way and join in a fight that wasn't even really theirs. Right. And his success on the battlefield, that further proves his abilities. Yeah, he wasn't just some figurehead. No. Inaros actually besieged Memphis, one of the most important cities in ancient Egypt. Exactly. And he held off the Persians, who, you know, were known for their military prowess for years. That's amazing. Holding them off for years. That's a serious accomplishment, a right. real testament to his strategic thinking and the level of support he had from both the Egyptians and his fellow Amazai. It wasn't just a short-lived rebellion. It was a sustained challenge to Persian authority, one that really shook the foundations of their rule in Egypt. It's, uh, it's amazing to think about, you know, the dynamics at play during that siege. Memphis wasn't just any city. It was a vital political and religious center for the Egyptians. If Inaros could control Memphis, well, that would have been a huge symbolic victory. And it might have even rallied more support to his cause. So he wasn't just fighting for territory, right? Yeah. He was fighting for, like, the soul of Egypt, trying to reclaim it from the Persians. Exactly. His rebellion tapped into those existing tensions between the Egyptians and their Persian rulers. You have to remember, the Persians had conquered Egypt a few decades earlier, and a lot of Egyptians resented having foreign rulers. Inaros became the symbol of resistance, a champion for those who wanted freedom. And having the Athenian navy on his side, that must have given him a big advantage, huh? Oh, definitely. It's like a chess game, each side moving their pieces, trying to outmaneuver the other. Yeah, trying to predict what the other guy's going to do. Right. The Athenians, with their powerful navy, could control the Nile, which was like a lifeline for Egypt. They could disrupt Persian supply lines and reinforce Inaros' positions. But the Athenians, they had their own interests to think about, too. So their motives weren't completely pure. Right. Their support for Inaros was driven by what's called real politic. Basically, they wanted to weaken the Persians, their rivals, even if it meant getting involved in a conflict that was far away from their own land. So it was a win-win for them, at least for a while. Mm. Exactly. And that's an important thing to remember when you're studying history. Alliances are often complicated, driven by a whole bunch of different motives. The Athenians, facing problems back home, eventually had to withdraw their support, leaving Anaros alone to face the full might of the Persian Empire. Man, that must have been a tough blow for Anaros and his supporters to go from having this powerful ally to suddenly being on their own against a Persian army. It was a major turning point in the rebellion. The Persians, led by this skilled general, Megabizus, they launched a massive counteroffensive. Despite Inaros' early successes and his, um, you know, his valiant efforts, he was just outmatched. The Persians had more men and they outmaneuvered him. The details of his capture and execution are still debated by historians, but his tragic ending, it reminds us of the risks you take when you challenge a powerful empire. It's a sad ending to the story of a, a real hero. It reminds us that even the bravest fighters can be defeated. But Inara's legacy it didn't die with him, did it? Not at all. His story still resonates with people, even centuries later. The fact that we're talking about him today proves that. And there's this fascinating novel titled Inaru by Ali Fami Kashim. That gives us a fictionalized account of Inaris's life and struggles. It's incredible how a figure from so long ago mm -hmm. can still capture our imagination, you know? Yeah. But even beyond his personal story, Inaros' rebellion, it tells us something bigger, doesn't it? <laughs> it reveals the deep presence and influence uh -huh. of the Amazi in Egypt, a presence that goes way beyond just this one rebellion. Absolutely. The Amazi weren't just bystanders in Egyptian history. They were active participants. They helped shape its culture, its society, and even its politics. Inaros' story is just one chapter in a much longer and much richer narrative. So let's zoom out a bit and look at the bigger picture. If Inaros' rebellion was like one keek in a mountain range, 
What else makes up that landscape? That's a great way to put it. And one of the most amazing things about that landscape is the rise of Amazai pharaohs in Egypt. We'll dig into that fascinating chapter next. Amazai pharaohs ruling Egypt. That's, that's a twist I wasn't expecting. It really changes you know, the image we have of ancient Egypt. As this, uh, this monolithic culture mm. ruled only by those like dynasties of Egyptian descent? It certainly does. It shows us how, um, how fluid power and cultural influence were in the ancient world. One of the best examples is the 22nd dynasty of Egypt. They ruled from the 10th to the 8th century BC. These pharaohs, they're often called the, uh, the Libyan dynasty, had Amazai origins and ruled Egypt for over two centuries. Just two centuries, that's a long time. Yeah. A really big chunk of Egyptian history. It really shows how integrated the Amazai were yeah. in Egyptian society. They weren't just, you know, living alongside Egyptians. They were ruling them. Yeah. So what kind of impact did these Amazai pharaohs have on Egypt? Well, their reign was a fascinating time, a period of cultural fusive. You see, while they kept many traditional Egyptian practices and those religious beliefs, they also brought in elements of their own Amazai culture. Oh, interesting. This blend of traditions, you can see it reflected in their art, their architecture, and even their names. It's like this cultural conversation yeah. happening across generations, each group adding to you know, the evolution of Egyptian civilization. Exactly. It reminds us that cultures aren't static. They're always evolving, always influencing one another. And this exchange, it wasn't just limited to the uh, the royal court. Remember Herodotus's observations? Yeah, he noticed that some Egyptians, they adopted Amazai customs and vice versa. Right. So it wasn't just a top-down thing. It was happening at the grassroots level, too. It paints a picture of this, this vibrant, multicultural society where different groups were living together sharing their ideas and practices. Precisely. Imagine those bustling marketplaces filled with Egyptian and Amazi merchants, or those temples where priests from both cultures performed rituals. This exchange of culture, it happened for centuries, and it enriched Egyptian society. It created a more diverse and dynamic cultural landscape. So Inaros' rebellion, even though it was this, this pivotal moment in history, it was really just one part of a much bigger story, the story of the Amazi presence and their influence in Egypt. Inaros might have fought against an empire, but his ancestors, they were part of the fabric of Egyptian society. They even rose to become pharaohs. It reminds us that history is full of complexities and contradictions. We often try to put events and people into neat little boxes, but reality is much more nuanced. The Amazai, just like many groups throughout history, played many roles, sometimes as rebels, sometimes as rulers, but they always left their mark on the world around them. Inaros' story it encourages us to look beyond those uh, those familiar narratives and explore those hidden stories that have shaped our world. It reminds us that even those seemingly forgotten figures, they'd have a huge impact, and their stories, they deserve to be remembered and shared. And if anyone wants to learn more about Inaros' world, that novel Inaru by Ali Fami Tashim offers a really captivating glimpse into his life and times. It's been a great journey traveling through time, uncovering this, this hidden history of the Amazai in ancient Egypt. We learned about their deep roots, their contributions to culture, their rise to power, and the legacy of one remarkable fighter who stood up to an empire. May Anaros' story inspire us all to keep asking questions, to keep exploring, and to keep searching for those hidden voices that shaped our past and continue to influence our present. Thank you all for joining us on this documentary by the Tollup Foundation. Until next time, keep exploring and keep uncovering those hidden stories that connect us all.